Hello everybody and thank you for joining me in episode 1 of Sick in the Head Reviews here on the Horror Sickness. In this episode we take a look at Maniac Cop from 1988. No one knows his name. No one knows his face. Oh no. But now, the most terrifying man in the city carries a badge. Edward, unstable and there's a deceleration injury. As in your old hanging. You really think a cop did this? Why not? Would you automatically assume that it was a police officer instead of some lunatic dressed up like a cop? Vice squad. He'll kill again. He enjoys killing. He strikes without cause, without mercy. He may be getting information from inside the department. That means he is one of us. You see a cop, you crossed to the other side of the street. You're not gonna get me. Everybody who wants to shoot a cop nowadays has got one hell of an excuse. This one is my personal life, any of your business. Since your wife was found dead in the motel room, you gotta be wrong. You wanna see the pretty picture? <laughs> Hold on, I, I didn't do any of this. When a cop turns killer, you have the right to remain silent forever. <laughs> Maniac Cop. In this film, innocent people are being brutally murdered on the streets of New York City by a uniformed police officer. As the death toll rises, Detective Frank McRae heads the investigation, played by Tom Atkins, who is credited with appearing in over 70 films, including most recently Drive Angry from 2011. Jack Forrest, the young cop played by B-movie legend Bruce Campbell, finds himself under arrest as the chief suspect. He and his girlfriend, Teresa, played by Lauren Landon, along with McRae, then set out to solve the mystery before the maniac cop strikes again. This classic 80s slasher, released back in 1988, was directed by William Lustig, who is also known for directing 1980's Maniac, Vigilante from 1983, and the follow-ups to Maniac Cop, Maniac Cop 2, and Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. He is currently one of the producers of working on the remake of Maniac, which is due for release in 2013. The film was first released on DVD in 1998 by Elite Entertainment, and then later by Synapse Films back in 2006 as a special edition. Synapse Films have also recently released the Blu-ray version of the film. I watched the film again last night and it's a film that clearly isn't too caught up with trying to establish itself alongside more professional efforts of the horror genre and instead it simply revels in its B-movie status. This gives the film free reign to do whatever it wants to do and it doesn't have to worry about coherency or logic. This helps it massively, as the final results show. Actually, I think it's a rather professionally well-handled B-movie, and many of the reasons why it works are down to things like atmosphere and the characters. The plot is well-worked, and the way that the mystery pans out is interesting and exciting. The story follows a problem in New York. Innocent citizens are turning to the police for help, as usual, but one officer isn't bowing to the law and has taken upon himself to dish out justice in his own way. This maniac cop is exterminating the local population and it's up to framed copper Jack and Mistress Teresa to save the day. The way that director William Lustig portrays the New York streets gives the film a lot of its power. It's very gritty in the same way that many of the 70s cop thrillers were and this combined with the thick 80s trash makes it a really good film to watch. The scenes that see the maniac cop taking people out are very funny but also quite shocking at times as well. The police are looked up to in most societies and it would be a huge problem if one of them were to start dishing out the wrong kind of law themselves. The scriptwriter and B-movie god Larry Cohen seems keen to portray this too, with much of the action taking in the panic that previous events have caused. One of this film's main assets is definitely the presence of Bruce Campbell. Campbell isn't quite as over the top as he is in Sam Raimi's classic trilogy of the Evil Dead but he's playing a different character and just seeing him is a good reason to see this film. He's joined by fellow B-movie actor Tom Atkins as well as Lauren Landon and Robert Zarr 
who is perfectly cast in the role. As for the Arrow release itself, um, the extras include a brief intro with actor Tom Atkins, two TV spots, two theatrical trailers and three interviews. The first interview with Tom Atkins and the second interview with actress Lauren Landon. The third interview with screenwriter Larry Cohen. The interviews with uh, Tom Atkins and Lauren Landon covered similar ground. They both discussed their roles, their thoughts on other cast members and director William Lustig, who Lauren Landon doesn't seem particularly fond of. They both also discussed various other films that they have appeared in. For me, without a doubt, the most interesting of these three interviews is the one with Larry Cohen, who discusses the first time he met William Lustig, how he came up with the idea of making the film Maniac Cop, the other films that have worked, he has worked with William Lustig on, and including the two Maniac Cop sequels and also a film called Uncle Sam, the cast and his dissatisfaction with the casting of Robert Zarr, who plays Matt Cordell in the film. He also discusses how Maniac Cop didn't fare so well um, when it was first theatrically released back in 1988. He also touches on various other films that he wrote screenplays for or directed. Rounding out the extras, there's also um, a collector's booklet in this one that contains brand new writing on the film by author Troy Howarth. There's an interview with William Lustig. Um, a reversible sleeve with original and newly commissioned artwork and a double-sided fold-out artwork poster as well. Uh, at the end of this video I will lay everything out and we'll film that and take a, a bit of a closer look at it. Overall, personally, I really enjoyed the film and this particular edition has definitely been well handled by Arrow. It looks really sharp and clear throughout and it's definitely worth picking up. Um, that's pretty much it for my first review here. Uh, Sick in the Head reviews on Horror Sickness. Thank you very much for watching. Um, please keep an eye out for more reviews that will be coming again. And yeah, that's it from me. Take it easy, everybody.